you're less of a coach at professional level anyway of course coaching takes on different forms at a young age you've got to get the basics into the kids but whoa 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 have you hit that subscribe button if not what are you waiting for do it Hello and welcome back to Total Sport and another interview. Today we have got uh, another cricketer, a former England One Day International captain, Mr Adam Hollyoak, who's out in Australia at the moment, his place of birth. How are you, Adam? Hi guys, how are you? Yeah, it's, it's great to have uh, Adam on. Obviously, uh, play for England cricket uh, and Australian as well. Uh, as well. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's brilliant to have you on and thank you very much for, for giving us your time. Uh, so, so first off, Adam, uh, we'll talk about where it all started for you. So, how much was cricket a part of your childhood? Um, yeah, I mean, I think all sport was a part of my childhood, really. Um, cricket was just one of the sports. Um, I was probably like most kids who grew up in my era, and a lot of the kids now are the same. Just did all sports. I did rugby, Australian rules football when I was living out in Australia. Um, cricket, hockey, athletics anything really made up a few games of our own as well so it was just one of a lot of sport crazy um upbringing really yeah you um you spent some time out in hong kong as a youngster i read um how yes. was that to 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 move away from your home country for the first time and obviously you'd spend a lot of time in england as well but how was that first off for you um i i it's weird. It doesn't. It didn't. I mean, it was my childhood. So, you, at the time, you, I think you're quite adaptable when you're young, and you just do what your parents tell you to do. So, we moved around a lot. I think I was in England when I was about eight or nine, and then um, we moved to Hong Kong for a little bit, and then back to Australia for a couple of years, and then eventually came over to England when I was twelve. So, a lot of moving around. Um, and when you're young, I guess you probably don't really notice that big a deal. I didn't notice that much a big deal between Hong Kong and Australia or England because you're just stuck in your own little bubble really playing sport going to school and yeah and that's about it. that's it really so you just follow your parents around absolutely so you got your first contract with Surrey um how describe the emotions of when you first got that and uh and yeah we're moving back over to England how was it um yeah, it was weird because I've been in England for, well, I don't know, um, five years or something. I only started playing cricket really seriously when I got to England. So I'd only played a handful of games before I got over here. So, um, And then, yeah, I think someone, I was about 16 and someone told me Ian Gregg wanted to come down and see me down at the Oval and I didn't know who Ian Gregg was. So um, he came down to see me. I, I realised he must have been a big deal by the fact that everyone was making a big deal over him. But um, I didn't follow county cricket back then. I was sort of more interested in the international game. And then he came down and offered me a contract. And I didn't even, I was only 16, so I didn't even know what a contract was. So um, it just seemed like I'd hit the jackpot though, because I think my first contract was £3,000 for the year. And I think at that time I was on five pounds a week pocket money. So I thought, I thought I'd made it big. So I thought I was going to be able to retire. But um, yeah, it was, it was good. I mean, I realized that that was my first insight into getting paid to play sport. So it was, um, yeah, it was, it was, it was, a, it was a nice feeling to have that, that opportunity. Yeah. So you played along some, some, some big names in, in your times at Surrey. Um, what players or coaches in particular had the biggest influence on you and why? It's interesting, isn't it? Like, like you think back and, I mean, when the first guys that spring to mind, really, uh, Keith Medlicott, David Gilbert, Graham Clinton, probably Graham Clinton because I spent most of my development period with him. David Gilbert, he took my game to another level. And then... Keith Medlicott's the guy who we won all the trophies under. So it's they all had their own role to play. Um, there's not one that was more important than the other. I feel that they're all important. Graham Clinton was uh, very tough on me, and I guess that's what you need when you're young. David Gilbert was the first guy to sort of sort of acknowledge that 
I was a man and I had my own thoughts and he sort of worked with them. And then Keith Medlicott was very relaxed and just got the best out of us. So um, they're all very, very different coaches, but uh, all equally important. Yeah, interesting to hear from a player's point of view, really. What, for you, makes a really good coach? What defines it for you? Hey, I'm still, I'm still searching for that myself. I'm a coach myself, so um, if you'd asked me this three or four years ago, I would have, I'd have probably started trying to recite, recite Winston Churchill-type speeches or, um, you know, trying to... Um, do word for word the speech out of any given Sunday or some sort of Hollywood blockbuster speech. But in reality, I, I think it's the opposite to that, really. Um, I know everybody thinks that, you know, teams doing really badly. The coach comes in and sprays the players, yells at them without any particular direction. And the players then go, OK, we weren't trying hard enough. And then go out and kick 10 goals in the second half or whatever sport you're playing, they do something like that. In reality, I don't think it's like that. I think the longer I'm involved in it, I think the longer it's... You're less of a coach at professional level anyway. Of course, coaching takes on different forms. At a young age, you've got to get the basics into the kids. But um, when you're working with you know, international players or first-class players, I always think it's, you're less of a coach and you're collaborating with them more. You're sort of working out ways for them to play together with their input as well. Um, it's not the same need to give players feedback as when I was around because we've got so much better access to computers and visual. You know, we can look, look at um, video analysis, which is a massive difference. Back when I was playing, it was like so hard to get video. And the only time you really got the chance to see yourself was when you played on TV. So... Um, and then basically what you're relying on is what you're seeing with your eyes, being able to articulate it, and then, or being able to articulate what you're seeing with your eyes, then the player being able to understand what you're saying, and then be able to visualize what you're thinking. So there's so much can go wrong. You can be trying to see one thing, and by the time you've articulated it in the way they, run, they, they see it totally differently. So to be able to, show a player a video or point something out on a video is, is like a massive advantage. So I think it's, um, I think the skill's less in coaching technique now and more problem solving and helping players work what works for them. Yeah. So you, you mentioned you had a really successful period at Surrey uh, in which the middle of you got into the England team. Um, so being born in Australia, um, and you obviously made your, I think it was your A debut in Australia or something like that, or yes. against Australia. Yeah. So how was that for you? Was it sort of a, a, a different one for you? Was it something that you, you envisaged happening? Um, I, uh, it's strange because obviously I, I, I was born in Australia and, um, and I, I guess the fact that every time I played for England, someone reminded me that I was born in Australia. But at the age of 12, when I went to England, like playing international sport was the furthest thing from my mind. It wasn't like I went to England to try and get into the England side rather than the Australian side. It was never really... Then there's just the way it worked out. I was just with my parents and we just ended up going over there. And I seemed to end up playing a lot of my career against Australia. I played England A against Australia. A on that trip and then a lot of my early one day internationals I think of my 35 one day internationals I'd have to say a third of them were against Australia and then half the test matches I played were against Australia so it seemed to be a common theme that I was playing against the country where I was born but I, I don't care I don't I don't it doesn't bother me it was like there's nothing I could do about it there's um it wasn't my choice it wasn't my I didn't plan it. It wasn't, it's just the way it was. I was, I went, my parents went to England when I was 12 and, and I had to go along. It's not like I had the choice to go out on my own at the age of 12. So I just, um, I enjoyed playing against Australia because I understood their psyche. I grew up there for a little bit. So I wasn't intimidated by them. Australians like to use, um, 
You know, they play aggressively. A lot of um, they like to talk a lot on the pitch, so uh, it didn't bother me. So um, I think I probably had more success against them than the other sides. Yeah. So uh, one one thing we we, all, we need to touch on really is, is your brother, um, who unfortunately isn't with us anymore. Uh, how much of an impact did that have on your life and your career when, say, he sadly died uh, back in uh, back in two thousand and two, I believe. Yeah. Um, yeah, it did at a at a at a massive part. I mean, I don't think there's a day goes past where I, I don't think of him still. So it's definitely had a, a massive part in my life. Um and I think it will. I think it'll continue to. Um still I think anyone who's lost someone they they understand that um uh, and, and when I say lost someone, I mean I guess we all lose grandparents and their parents is sort of the natural cycle of life to lose our elders but when we lose someone younger than us or a child or grandchild or you know or sibling it's um i think it's a different a different thought process so it's still something that i think about a lot and it's definitely i'd be lying if i said it hadn't affected me at quite largely at different times in my life so um yeah probably the hardest thing i've ever been through in my life yeah, and do you think it potentially had an impact on you, sort of mentally, at coming towards the end of your career? Because you had suffered some injuries as well. But do you think it maybe accelerated your retirement? Yeah, well, it didn't accelerate it. It was the whole sole reason for it. So, I mean, I'd had some injuries, but I think all sportsmen have injuries. I mean, I'm still, you know, I'm I'm coming up for fifty now, and I. I I don't have any, I mean, I've got some niggles, but I feel great most days. I feel like I could still go out there and play. So I don't think it was the thing which, injuries weren't the thing which stopped me from playing. Uh, and I don't think injuries ever would stop me from playing. So it was um, it was a mixture of dealing with my brother's death and then just not wanting to do it anymore, really. So um, they were the two things. I think physically I'm still capable of playing, so... Um, it's just, I think eventually mentally for whatever reason, usually a lot of people finish because they just mentally don't want to do it anymore or can't find the motivation to do it anymore or whatever. And I think I fell in that bracket after my brother died. Cricket didn't take on such a, uh, I didn't enjoy it as much. So yeah, um, that would be the sole reason rather than anything else. Yeah, so you're still involved in the game and now you mentioned your coaching. Was that always something you wanted to do after the game? Um, not really. No, I think I said when I retired I needed to step away from the game. and I did completely step away from the game. I finished in 2004 and played a little bit of cricket here and there, but basically stepped away from the game for the best almost 15 years. Um, so probably I think about... 12 or 13 years I stepped away from the game so um, and I always knew I'd come back and, and coach at some stage but um, I, I didn't know when it was going to happen just as I didn't know that I was going to retire just one day just everything felt now's the time to retire and just as one day I decided now's the time to go back and coach so um, yeah I just here I am it's just like sometimes you just follow your heart and your head or mixture of the both and um, yeah, and I'm, here I am coaching. I actually, I really enjoy it. Yeah, I definitely. And, and another thing that you use to sort of, in, in between that time where you weren't playing cricket, is is um, combat sports and mixed martial arts, boxing. Um, was that again? You you mentioned you were you have had a very sporty childhood. Um, was that always something that you wanted to get into? Was that something you were passionate about? Yeah, I mean, I've loved it. I mean. Um, I think I first started boxing when I was about 12, 13, something like that. Um, and I just always had a keen interest in it. I think it was the sort of Mike Tyson era. He was he was coming on the scene and he sort of captured everyone's imagination and, and particularly mine. So um, he was someone that I looked up to in a, in a big way and I wanted to, uh, I was fascinated by the way he fought. So um and and the way I am, I'm a physical cricketer, I'm a physical athlete, so um, it just kind of suited me. And then throughout the years, I added some Brazilian jiu-jitsu and some other 
fighting skills to my to my resume and and then I've just carried on doing it and I love learning new stuff and I just I guess I will keep doing that as well I, I, don't, I think my days of competing are over but uh, I'm always interested in learning yeah definitely and I think what in, in terms of the the future for you Adam what what does that hold do you do you have any particular plans that you want to go down is it still continuing coaching and that kind of stuff and, and what, what, what's your ambitions um yeah I think I do have some ambitions. I don't have any like long-term ambitions. In the short term, I obviously I want to be the best coach that I can be. I've got a couple of little businesses which I um, I'm involved in, which are doing pretty well. So you know, I like to keep those. But and then also I'm a I'm a, a single father of three kids. So um, I guess I'll, my job at the moment is to try and bring them up as well as I can, as well. So there's there's a number of things which I've got to. Um, to do but it's um I don't have any one like large looming goal that I want to achieve it's like I feel like there's something I want to do but right now I feel like I've got other stuff like bring up my children well and um being the best coach that I can be at the moment so um just I just take things as they come along I'm sure in time and we and we, we do I guess we reevaluate our goals right now that's that's where I'm at and I know that they can change because you know I was happily going along playing cricket um, and then one day I just didn't want to play anymore so and then I had to reevaluate everything so and this has sort of been a feature of my life where I'm so passionate in something and then one day I just decide I don't want to do that anymore and then I've got to shift and change my direction so I was just um, quite happy to go along until that time comes where I, I recognize the need to change and then hopefully uh, I can change yeah well it's been an absolute pleasure having you on to chat uh, Adam uh, so where can we find you uh, on social medias mate well it's Adam Holyoke it's just uh, all Adam Holyoke all lowercase I'm on Instagram Facebook Twitter I'm all I'm on all those things so um, yeah look me up yeah, go, go go give Adam a follow. It's been an absolute pleasure uh, tapping into your brain and uh, and learning some 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 really key stuff. And yeah, um, make sure you guys who are watching subscribe to the channel. Uh, we're doing all right at the moment, so keep keep that up. And yeah, uh, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you next time.